Singara Chennai is one of the multicultural metros of India. Also known as the Detroit of the country, it has seen thousands of people migrating from rural areas. However, the present scenario does not seem to support their lifestyle. This demands an environment that is affordable for all. According to census 2007, Tamil Nadu stands second to Maharashtra in terms of shortage in urban housing. Slum population in Chennai is at least 30% of the population of the city. 40,500 people cook, eat and live under the open skies. Every year, they fall prey to environmental calamities and domestic violence. A part of the city is leading a sumptuous lifestyle, while these people are forced to live among filth. They are deprived of basic human needs like sanitation, security, food, clothing and healthcare. They are often shunned to the margins of their own city by ignorant developers. Such conditions compel them to sweat out their efforts. Statistics show that 88% of people resort to hard physical labor like rickshaw pulling, pottering and hardware related mechanical work. Now, when we think about a residence, we are given a very narrow perspective of it being a well defined space prized by the area and number of rooms at the planar level at which it is designed and is permanent. A typical apartment building today consists of anywhere between 25 to 100 units but a maximum of 4 to 5 different layouts on a floor which are vertically replicated. The result? People from different backgrounds, different age groups, different space requirements, belonging to different parts of the country or the world, used to living in houses with different organizational structures, having different ideas about optimal areas of individual spaces, are all forced to limit themselves to one layout. The only way out of this conundrum is to accept that the best one can do is to anticipate change rather than predict certainty. Housing also needs to respond to the internal changes during the lifetime of its occupant. If it cannot adapt, then the users will have to move on, which is both socially and financially disruptive. This calls for a need of housing that can adjust to changes, needs and patterns, both social and technological. Flexibility lets the house adapt according to the occupant's needs. By acknowledging the extent of unknown change, flexible housing helps the residents to customize in tune with the trend. This helps them stay longer in their abode without too much expenditure, costly disruption and premature abolescence. Flexible housing opens opportunities to the user in some ways. For example, through the ability to customize which gives the future resident a degree of choice over the future home. Post-completion, which is, the user has the liberty to make adjustments on their own terms after a basic level of construction is done. Located in one of the biggest metropolitan cities and busiest localities, Arepuram Adyar, this site is positioned along the Adyar estuary and beside the Leela Palace. It has two access roads to it. Flanking the north side of the site, there are innumerable amenities available including a reputed school and private hospitals. The area also holds a famous college of arts and science, a bank and recreational spaces. The location is well connected with the transportation network. The zoning of the site emphasizes upon the idea, separated yet connected. The EWS units are clubbed with the LIG units and the MIG units with the HIG units. This gives prominence to comfort and security. There is visual connection but no physical connection between the high-rise and low-rise buildings based on their arrangement. Dreams make all the mankind come together. The process of construction loop starts with the EWS building their own houses by using simple building techniques. Alongside, the EWS and LIG groups are trained by the professionals under a temporary structure. While receiving this training side by side, the EWS and LIG work together to build the LIG houses. 
followed by the construction of LIG houses and acquiring ample skills, willing people from both the groups come together to build high-rise apartments for MIG and HIG. Finally, the temporary structure is improvised into a commercial space, which serves the public as well. By doing this, the EWS and LIG gain skills as well as employment. The economically weaker section is generally a household having an annual income of up to 1 lakh per annum. The members of the family generally have jobs as daymongers, including some common professions like daily labourers, fishermen, vendors, etc. The living space in today's context is to provide a space to adjust the user, whereas it should be the spaces that adapt according to the user. Flexibility The flexible partition walls for the EWS are comprised of agro-waste fiberboard. These walls hold significance in customizing privacy inside the flat. The design of these modules emphasize upon flexibility through furniture. A special fitting mechanism using a round bolt instead of metal hinges is used to minimize the cost as it is affordable for this class. Another flexible contraption works as a semi-open space that may be used as a shop or a balcony a simple glass top table and a window. The low income group is generally a household having an annual income ranging from 1 lakh to 2 lakhs per annum. The members generally have permanent yet not very well paid jobs. The spaces have been designed to have adequate privacy by providing a hierarchy starting from the entry that is public, private and semi-private. Movable walls that slide along the floor provide the user with the freedom to customize the space and the circulation according to the spatial preferences. Majority of the middle-aged Indian population desires an abode of their own. A comfortable suburban home with a lush green yard in the back and interactive space in the front abutting the street is their ideal perception. Imagine this model being stacked one on top of the other, creating an apartment that retains the same principle in the urban setting. Automatically transforming their ideal perception into a deluxe flat with their own green space in the back and a common central open space. In order to provide the volumetric and planar flexibility according to the user, we need a system or a structure where the people can create their own space and customize them. A structure which gives each one of them the comforts and adaptability they need for the current and the future. Basically what we require is a support and infill method of designing. A unit can range from a simple closed wall structure on a plane or at levels with options for opting of landscape spaces designed according to his desires. When it comes to customizing plans on one level, the liberty of moving even the washroom and services is molded using the inverted beam technique, which enables the service pipes and lines to move according to the user and can be changed in the future. The movable panels also favor the customization. Dead end to cyclic processes, sustainability. A world where we can turn unwanted waste into desirable scheme. 
maintain the cycle of food, water and energy by transforming waste into futuristic opportunities. A commercial complex defining the entrance makes the cross subsidization possible outside the community. It is provided with spaces of offices, a gallery and a workshop and is maintained by the community. Imagine this kind of flexibility in choosing your home, the center of your existence, your lifetime investment. Imagine having the ability to choose according to your preferences, your lifestyle, your ideals and essentially your design. What we will have then is a truly metropolitan residential building that adjusts to your needs and not the other way around.